from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English, winner of the Southern Oregon Television Award for Program of the Year and the Award for Best Educational Program. I'm your host and producer, John Letts. Ramping Up Your English is an educational support program for intermediate English learners. It's a program for people from all language backgrounds and from all people of all ages. If you've already passed the beginning stages of learning English and want to reach higher levels of proficiency, this program is designed to meet your needs. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher levels of English proficiency. Our current thematic unit is animals. This is segment one of episode 48. In our previous episode, we conducted a short discussion about zoos. Now, we did not engage in the fever pitch attack and counterattack that has unfortunately overtaken public discourse in the United States in recent years. We demonstrated how opposing ideas can be shared in a way that's respectful and enriching. Today, we look at the language needed to participate in discussions. If you haven't seen episode 47, I suggest you do so before you continue seeing this one. Go to letscreate.org and follow the link to episode 47. That'll get you on the 47 page. From there, you can view the previous episode. That includes the discussion about zoos. In that episode, we role-played a discussion with my guest, Miss Lisa, presenting the pro side of zoos and myself presenting the con side. In other words, Lisa was all for zoos, I was against them. In the discussion, pro means for and con means against. Here's just the discussion part of episode 47. I want to welcome Miss Lisa to our program. Lisa, welcome to Ramping Up Your English. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. Miss Lisa is going to help us model, do a role play of discussion skills. And we'll just jump right in. So I'll just say, well, we're friends, okay? So, uh, so Miss Lisa, what you got going today? I have a great day plan that's going to be big. I'm going to take my grandson to the Oregon Zoo. Oh. Yeah, I can't wait to see how he interacts and gets to see the animals. What are you doing this afternoon? Well, I'm not doing that. Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. But, you. <laughs> well, you know, uh, the thing is, I'm starting to really, I have my doubts. Oh. To me, it seems that, well, I just don't think zoos are good for the animals there. Oh, right, right. Well, I remember some zoos in the past that weren't too too kind to the animals, but I know that they've done a lot since then. They've like, you know, made them bigger places and like they've gotten some professionals in and they're doing some great things at the zoo. Yeah, there's yeah. no doubt about that. They have yeah. really made a lot of positive changes. Yeah. It's just that when you get down to the bottom of it, it's still an enclosure and it's still not really seeing the animals as they are in their natural life. True, true, I agree, but where else are you? kids who can't travel are going to be able to go and see these real animals up close. And you know what? They've come a long way. They've got like educational features next to each of the exhibits or areas that they have these, these animals in. So a lot could be learned, you know, for these young minds. I think that's a positive. Yeah. Well, I mean, learning is important. Yeah. Uh, it's just that I know that when you see an animal in the wild, it's not just walk up and there they are, True. you know. And okay. so, um, yeah, it's just my own doubts that I'm starting to have. I've been to zoos before and enjoyed it, but I'm I'm just kind of not a little cold, cold, cool to the idea. Right, right. I see that a lot of animals, you know, are they're not in their natural habitats. But I know that nowadays, zoos have like brought lots of land and property, so they've really tried to model a lot of their, the areas for the animals that mimic their natural, you know, environments and habitats. I, I know it's not the same, but I feel like they've, they're, they're doing some, some good effort. Well, they, the, the, no doubt they get an A for effort, <laughs> you know, or E for effort. The, the thing is, um, with, the, with the enclosures, 
is that it doesn't meet the needs of animals like elephants, for example. You know, elephants roam several miles a day. Well, mm. that, no, no matter how much space they give them at a zoo, they're not going to be able to do that. And now look at zebras, you know, migratory animals. So many zoos have zebras. Well, zebras do these great, you know, 200, 300 mile migrations oh, wow. on the Serengeti. Well, they're not going to do that at a zoo. That's true. That is true. That's true. I, uh, I feel for them. <laughs> You're making me think. But I do know also that the benefit is, is that a lot of these animals that are out there in the wild, they're being hunted. You know, and a lot of them are going extinct. So I think the zoos, you know, they're they're giving them a safe place and refuge and like healing them and rehabilitating them. And then they've also brought biologists in, so they're trying to you know work with the endangered species to work with them, getting them off the endangered species list. Well, you know, they live longer. I mean, we know that from from right. from facts in in yeah. captivity. It's just that what is their life? You know, what what's the quality of life in there as a as a natural animal? So. Uh, you know, I just, uh, I used to really enjoy zoos, but I've learned some things, you know, uh, fairly recently, and I'm really starting to, to question whether zoos are that good of an idea. Even the ones they, they save, you know, through reproduction and stuff, yeah. well, those usually cannot be left out, let out in the wild. That's you true. Know, so. That's true. Yeah, where do you do with them, right, after they're they've been in rehabilitated, you can't let them out, and what are they gonna do? Are they, can they live back out in the wild? That's right. Wow, I don't know. That's uh, that's something to think about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, if you change your mind, I appreciate it. If you wanna come out, you know. Okay, well, I appreciate that. And, yeah. and by the way, have a good time. I mean, these are just my own doubts. Yeah. There's no reason you shouldn't have a great time with your grandson. Yeah, I was debating. You're making me think, like, hmm, should I take him? But I still think it might be a good experience. Then I can talk to him about those things, you know, like the good and bad aspects of Zoo and see what his take is on it. Okay, so what we've had here is a real brief discussion about this. And uh, I just want to ch uh, check in on some of the, the parts of being respectful. Uh, did you feel I was respectful as the devil's advocate here? Definitely. Oh, definitely. You didn't make me feel threatened like you had the right or and I was wrong. I, I appreciate that. You know. Yeah. So this is a good example of a discussion that is respectful and enriching because we both learn things. So thank you, Miss Lisa, for being my guest oh, today. Thank you very much for having me on the show. So it, it's just a good idea. Now, you can watch Miss Lisa and me on a new children's program called Southern Oregon Classic Kids Show coming soon to RVTV Voices.